Welcome back, dear traders. Here is a red hot market review from our analysts. As expected, the major US stock indexes closed last week in the green. Upbeat financial reports from a top American companies encouraged a rally on Wall Street. As the result, two benchmark indexes closed July with the strongest gains in the last two years. The Dow Jones closed 0.97% on Friday, and the Nasdaq looked at the biggest growth of 1.88%. The S&P 500 rose 1.42% to close at 4,130 points. The major indexes had a less optimistic pre-market today. First, the three indexes traded mixed and turned sore by the early New York session. The S&P 500 is expected to trade in the Canada between 4,080 and 4,180 points today. As investors welcomed the strong profits of uh, Amazon and Apple, both the Nasdaq and the S&P 500 closed July with the best results since late 2020. The S&P 500 advanced almost 9.1% in July, the sharpest monthly growth since November 2020. The Nasdaq surged nearly 12.3%, the biggest monthly rise since April 2020. As for corporate reports, Intel shares dropped 8.6% after the company had downgraded the annual sales and revenue forecast and also had fallen short of expectations for the second quarter. 279 companies included in the S&P have already reported their profits. 77.8% of them surpassed expectations. Refinitiv reckons that profits of the S&P companies is likely to expand 7.1% in the second quarter compared to 5.6% increase in the previous forecasts. Experts at Goldman Sachs affirm that high revenues of American companies in the second quarter prove that recession fears are exaggerated. Analysts also say that wage growth that sets the stage for inflation acceleration is about to reach its peak. At the same time, most analysts are poised to make cautions forecast because the market might overestimate the growth of a corporate revenues. Companies have to struggle with a soaring inflation and ongoing snaps in the supply chains. Today, futures on the U.S. stocks indexes are trading lower. Investors will digest and use away the data due tonight and will shed light on economic conditions in the private sector. This week, investors will get to know corporate reports by Caterpillar, Starbucks, PayPal, Uber, Berkshire Hathaway and Devon Energy. Unlike the stock market, the US dollar is facing a challenge due to a re technical recession. Its index lift 0.52% to 105.35, the lowest level since July 5. The intraday trade in Canada is between 104.80 and 105.70. The safe haven US dollar was hit by sell offs in the second half of July. It had to rally just two times since mid July. The technical recession arose hopes that the US Fed would soften its aggressive rhetoric. As for the economic calendar, the highlight of the week will be certainly the US no farm payrolls and PMIs. Earlier today, the market was upset because factory activity in China unexpectedly shrank in July. Coronavirus waves overshadowed global demand. Manufacturing activity in Japan grew in July at the weakest pace for the last 10 months. Hence, investors are alert to the ISM manufacturing PMI. The USD card pay is a trading lower amid the soft US dollar. The pair sank to the lowest level in seven weeks. The loonie is sent to a third strength today, though at a slower pace. The intraday corridor for the pair is defined between 1.2780 and 1.2820.
Canadian markets are closed today for the public holiday and the economic calendar is also empty. Oil, Canada's key export commodity, is in a trouble again. The oil market is going through sell-offs on the back of the technical recession in the United States and the weak factory activity in the Asia. Benchmark oil grades are shed 4.5% today. Brent crude sank 3.25% to trade at $100 a barrel, and WTI plunged 4.38% to trade at $94.14 a barrel. Investors attach more importance to waning global demand than to the signs of a global oil shortage. The Libyan oil minister told Bloomberg that oil output in the country eventually stands at 1.2 million barrels per day after a series of disruptions. Now, market participants are sitting on the sidelines of the OPEC Plus Summit, slated for Wednesday. The cartel and its allies will keep on with a moderate expansion of their production rates amid insufficient production capacities and sparse investments in oil exploration. Bitcoin is losing its shine today. The flagship crypto made huge efforts to stay afloat above resistance at 24,000, but no success. The token lost ground to trade at about $23,100. Likewise, most altcoins could accelerate the downward correction. Ethereum tumbled below $1,700 and could retreat to $1,550. By and large, like all risky assets, popular digital tokens can boost of considerable gains in July. Ethereum jumped 58%, PNP and Solana increased 30% and 29% respectively. Bitcoin closed July 19% up. And the outlook for today is not so optimistic. If Bitcoin does not settle above 21,100, it will decline to $20,500. Alternatively, the token might grow to $21,500. So, we have summed up the results of a July and discussed the short-term prospects of a Wall Street. Do not miss the US PMI tonight, as this data could serve as an extra catalyst for market quotes. Make well-rounded decisions before opening any positions. See you online tomorrow.